So you decided to hop back in Destiny 2. I'm not going to question your judgment, but I'm sure some of us have died to random things in PvP and have wondered what the hell is shooting at me. So in today's guide, I'm going to help you optimally gear up and give you a bit of a shopping list, I'll call it, of weapons and gear to obtain. The way I structured this guide is so that the player can hop on every week and still find something worthy of their time to sink a couple hours in here or there. So without further ado, let's begin the guide. First and foremost, complete the Forsaken story. Doing so will unlock a quest line to unlock the Ace of Spades exotic hand cannon, which for those unaware is one of the stronger weapons in the entire game. While completing the Forsaken story and while getting Ace of Spades, you might get lucky and get a Forsaken weapon drop. Now if you direct your eyes on screen, you'll see the Badlander shotgun, the Go Figure pulse rifle, the Smuggler's Word sidearm, and the Duke Mark 44 hand cannon. Now, the reason that you want Badlander is because rapid fire shotguns are fantastic in both PvE and PvP, and the Badlander's a good first rapid fire shotgun. I recommend Full Choke, Rifled Barrel, Accurize Rounds, and a ranged Masterwork, and pretty much any perks you can get on it as long as you have that shotgun trifecta, as I call it, and I will reference that throughout the video. Don't worry too much about the shotgun having perfect perks, it will be replaced in the future. Pretty much the same thing can be said about the Go Figure Pulse Rifle. The typical recommended role is Kill Clip or Rampage plus Outlaw. It will be a PvE workhorse and will pretty much work in any piece of content. PvP, PvE, raids, strikes, it'll do it all. The Smuggler's Word is a shotgun alternative, so you could maybe pair this with a sniper rifle or a pulse rifle and not feel the need to use any special ammo. You would think with the Duke being so abundant that it would be bad, but it's actually one of the best hand cannons in the game for both PvE and PvP. In PvE, you want Rapid Hit Outlaw with Rampage, and in PvP, you want Opening Shot or Range Finder with Ricochet Rounds, and then for Perk 2, Rampage or Kill Clip so you can two-tap Guardians. It's essentially a replacement for the Ace of Spades whenever you want to run an exotic special or an exotic power weapon. So at this point in the guide, you completed the Forsaken story, you have obtained Ace of Spades, and maybe you collected one or two of those weapons that I listed. Your next task will involve understanding the Dreaming City reset cycle. So when you first touch down in the Dreaming City, you need to find Petra Venge. She's in one of three locations. This week, she was close by. So you talk to Petra, you pick up the bounties, and two of the bounties, the Ascendant Challenge and the Gateway Between Worlds, if you complete both of these, you get bonus rewards. So I highly recommend completing all of the top pursuit bounties. Every week, you'll have access to a Dreaming City mission, which I just marked on my map. For those wondering why do any of this Dreaming City stuff, it's because the gear you get can be fantastic and even have enhanced perks. In the background, you'll see I just got a pair of gloves for completing that Dreaming City mission. And voila! It has enhanced hand cannon loader. In regards to those pursuits that you picked up earlier, you need to pop a Tincture Queen's Foil, which is a consumable found pretty much anywhere in the Dreaming City, open chest, do patrols, that sort of thing, and this will give you access to the Ascendant Challenge. And keep in mind, the Ascendant Challenge is different each week, so find your local YouTuber who tells you what the weekly reset is, and he'll probably tell you where to find the Ascendant Challenge. For this particular week's Ascendant Challenge, all you do is scale to the top, kill a boss, open a chest, complete the bounty. The reward I got for this one wasn't too good. It was a cloak, and I even checked the cloak to see if it had a unique perk called Absolution. It didn't, and it didn't even have like Sniper or Shotgun Scavenger, so in other words, it was useless to me. The next Pursuit Bounty you're going to work on is the Offering to the Oracle, and you can complete this by knocking out waves of the Blind Well. Every completion gives you percent towards that bounty completed, but this is actually kind of difficult content alone, so I highly recommend bringing friends if you don't know the solo strategies. And if for some reason you don't have the third Forsaken subclass, this is the place to find it. Just complete waves, maybe it drops. After a couple completions, hopefully, you'd have finished the bounty, the pursuit. Upon completion, you want to head to the Oracle, turn in all the bounties, and you'll get a lot of rewards, but you'll probably end up getting Tiger Spites, that stupid auto rifle, like I do every week, but maybe you're luckier. So you might be wondering what sort of loot drops you could obtain from the Dreaming City. These are the highlights. You could get one of the strongest energy shotguns in the entire game, the Retold Tail, 
Again, I recommend the trifecta, full choke or rifled barrel with Acurize rounds and a ranged masterwork. You can maybe get the sleepless rocket launcher. This is a high impact rocket launcher, perfect for PVP. I recommend auto loading holster or field prep and cluster bombs. If you're not really feeling the Ace of Spades, then I recommend the Waking Vigil, which is a 150 RPM hand cannon, the perks, opening shot or hip fire, ricochet rounds down the center, and slide shot or snapshot for the perk two. I actually made an entire review on that, link in the description. If you're not really the shotgun type, then the Twilight Oath is right up your alley. It's a rapid fire sniper rifle. Perks I recommend is opening shot or hip fire with pretty much anything, but a curated roll exists and a curated roll comes completely masterworked with snapshot and box breathing. So after you knock out all the Dreaming City stuff, I recommend going to Commander Zavala in the tower and picking up the Danger After Dark quest step. The quest involves completing 30 bounties, which obviously will take a couple days, so just pick them up and complete them when it makes sense. When does it make sense? Well, I'm about to show you. I'm loading up the Vanguard Strike playlist, and you'll see that I have both a daily and a weekly reward. Now, I prefer PvP to strikes, but you can't pass up the free daily rewards whenever they're available, so knock them out, do the bounties, and you'll slowly progress towards the Nightshade Pulse Rifle. The Nightshade is fantastic. It comes with Under Pressure and Kill Clip, and it's a lightweight 450 RPM pulse, which actually makes sense with Kill Clip, because if you activate it, it is now a two-burst kill. So in the background, I am completing a strike, there's the chest, it opens, I get the daily reward, and then I turn in a bounty, which will show you progress towards that quest step. The reason I recommend this to new players is that it consolidates a lot of time and gives you easy light level, but the next thing you want to do is complete every portion, every facet of the Black Armory expansion. After doing so, your weekly ritual will consist of picking up bounties, doing a couple forges to unlock a ballistics log, using that ballistics log to purchase a weapon frame, and then doing a very small amount of tasks to charge the weapon frame. Then you actually go to a forge, charge the weapon frame, and you get a guaranteed drop. It sounds lengthy, but consider that there's not as much RNG involved for just obtaining a weapon, so in my opinion, it's worth the time. In the background, I'll show you what charging a sniper rifle frame looks like. So the first thing you want to do is complete your weekly bounty, Forging the Future. By turning this in, you get a ballistics log, which you then trade to Ada, which will give you a sniper rifle frame, which will tell you now you need to get multi-kills with sniper rifles. So go to your favorite law sector, farm some multi-kills. Then you unlock the next quest up, which tells you to defeat powerful enemies to get some sort of radiant seed drop which basically just means kill the Lost Sector boss twice. Then, after you accomplish that, you go back to Ada 1. I don't know why you go back to Ada 1, but you go back to her. Then, you go complete a Forge Ignition, and after the Ignition, your Sniper Rifle will be waiting at the end as a drop. You can repeat this pattern with whatever weapon frames that Ada has available each week, they change. The Black Armory weapons that I recommend farming are on screen now. You'll see the Kindled Orchid, which I recommend Rampage or Outlaw, or the Curated Roll, which contains both Rampage and Kill Clip. The Tatarage Snipe Rifle is an aggressive frame snipe. I recommend Quick Draw or Snapshot with Kill Clip. And the Hammerhead is the only, actually, it's one of two legendary machine guns now with the Christmas event. However, Hammerhead shreds. I go for quick draw, ricochet rounds, and rampage. As for the remaining weapons, you can pretty much get anything on a blast furnace, but you already know I'm gonna recommend feeding frenzy and rampage or kill clip. And for the striker's sure hand sword, just get surrounded. Let's be real. At this point in the guide, we're almost done. Just two small details. Let's keep it under 10 minutes. First, get yourself a shotgun, a good one. My Mender's Ambition, you get from the Hall of Lair Nightfall. Wishbringer, you play a lot of PvP, reset Valor, then buy one from Shax. And the Botheration, you can get from Year 1 Lost Sectors, but you could get this wall Dust Rock Blues farming. What's a Dust Rock Blues? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's the best shotgun in the entire game, but it's in the Kinetic slot, so unfortunately you can't use Ace with it. But I did make a video on the farming method, and yes, the God Roll is the same as all the others. The final thing you'll need to do is go to your collections, buy any random blue weapon, and just delete it. Doing so will give you a mod component, which you can then trade to the gunsmith to purchase super mods, which decrease your super cooldown, which means you have more supers to use in a match, which means now all the pieces are in place, you are effective at PvP. 
So have fun in the Crucible, be respectful to your fellow Guardians, and I'll see you in the next one.